वेलकम टू बायोलॉजी माइडियर स्टूडेंट वी आर लर्निंग चैप्टर टू बायोलॉजिकल क्लासिफिकेशन एंड लास्ट क्लास वी हैव स्टार्टेड किंगडम फंगी एंड वी केम टू नो अबाउट सम ऑफ द जनरल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ किंगडम फंगी दैट मीन्स द ऑर्गेनिज्म अंडर किंगडम फंगी वाट आर द जनरल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स दे पॉजिस माई डियर स्टूडेंट द मोर्फोलॉजी ऑफ माइसिलियम मूड ऑफ स्पोर फॉर्मेशन एंड फ्रूटिंग बॉडीज फॉर्म द बेसिस फॉर डिविजन ऑफ किंगडम इन टू फोर क्लासेस सो किंगडम फांगी इज डिवाइडेड इन टू फोर क्लासेस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ मोर्फोलॉजी ऑफ माइसिलियम मूड ऑफ स्पोर फॉर्मेशन एंड फ्रूटिंग बॉडी सो नंबर वन डिविजन इज फाइको माइसिटिस नंबर सेकेंड डिविजन इज एस्को माइसिटिस नंबर थर्ड डिविजन इज बेसिडो माइसिटिस नंबर फोर्थ डिविजन इज ड्यूरो माइसिटिस सो माई डियर स्टूडेंट दिस आर द फोर क्लासेस ऑफ किंगडम फांगी सो फर्स्ट लेट एस स्टडी अबाउट फर्स्ट क्लास ऑफ किंगडम फांगी That is phycomycetes. So, my dear student, here you will find that in kingdom fungi, okay, the organism uh, you can identify anywhere if you find the term mycetes. So, mycetes always denote fungi, okay. So, phycomycetes. This class name is phycomycetes. Members of phycomycetes are found in aquatic habitats and on decaying wood in moist. and damp places or as obligate parasites on plants so my dear student members of phycomycetes are found in aquatic habitat that means they love water so they are found in water or you will find in decaying woods so if some plants are dead then you will find that on the wood or on or when the plants are cut off and their wood logs are kept for some days then there you will find that uh, the member of this phycomycetes so they always prefer aquatic condition okay and where the soil is moist there also you can find in damp places also you will find and another you will find that on some plant they live as obligate parasites so obligate parasites are those organism you will find that uh, they will choose another organism as host and their life cycle is completed in that host so without a host they cannot complete their life cycle so some of the members of phycomycetes also behave like oligo parasites okay then my dear student in last class we came to know that in fungi mycelium are there okay can you remember about mycelium so um, fungi they are uh, we have learned that filamentous isn't it then in filament what happen some thread like structures are there and that thread like structures we called hypa and when this hypa make a network when this hypa will make a network that network is known as mycelium so my dear student in phycomycetes the mycelium is accepted and cnocytes so accepted means there will be no septa okay so septa you can um, consider it that um, it is a division between cell okay so there is no division uh, between two cells so they seems like single cell you can consider okay and cnocyte means um, a cell okay with multi nucleus so within a single cell wall if numerous nucleus are there then we can say this are uh, cnocytic okay so this uh, phycomycetes these are mostly uh, cnocytic okay and they are accepted 
so my dear student here are three examples of phycomycetes uh, here you can see mucor so it is a uh, diagram of mucor or picture can you see so in a screen it is displayed that mucor so under microscope you can see the structures of mucor in this form then my dear student rhizophus so rhizophus in common uh, term we call it as a bread mold so uh, if you keep a piece of bread for many days okay then you'll find that a layer is formed on bread and that layer we can is uh, known as rhizophus okay so you can see in picture how rhizophus structures are formed then next example you can see the parasitic fungi on mustard so in mustard plant if you find uh, sometime you'll find that uh, some parasitic formations are taking place in mustard plant so here you will see that on the fruits of mustard plants what happen some layers are formed and this layer is albigo okay so albigo is the parasitic fungi clear so i hope that this with this three example phycomycetes is clear okay my dear student so these are some example common examples of phycomycetes so just repeat with me phycomycetes uh, example mucor rhizophus and albigo okay the next number 2 is ascomycetes so my dear student commonly they are known as sac fungi so ascomycetes in common language they are known as sac fungi okay so sac means like bag so we can say uh, sac fungi okay then the ascomycetes are mostly multicellular so my dear student we know that uh, fungi in kingdom fungi all the members are multicellular except few okay so very rare unicellular fungi are there and already we came to know that rarely unicellular fungi example is yeast and yeast scientific name is saccharomyces okay yeast scientific name is saccharomyces and multicellular so mostly the ascomycetes this uh, class okay all the individuals mostly they are multicellular so one example we can take penicillium okay and rarely unicellular so one unicellular example we can take yeast and yeast scientific name is saccharomyces so in diagram you can see yeast these are unicellular so this is magnified image okay they are very very small so under microscope this structure we can see in this form okay and penicillium can you see this is the this is also magnified image of penicillium so penicillium is multicellular whereas yeast is single celled or unicellular okay then my dear student ascomycetes these are saprophytic so saprophytic means which live on decaying uh, decaying logs woods or on death plants or animal isn't it so ascomycetes they are saprophytic then decomposer so decomposer this uh, term is very important for our ecosystem isn't it so i hope that you have learned about ecosystem in your earlier classes so in ecosystem to complete the food chain there you will find that one group is acting as a producer then one group is acting as a consumer then another group is acting as a decomposer so to complete that food chain decomposer also plays a very significant role so here my dear student this ascomycetes are acting as a decomposers also okay and some of the members of ascomycetes are parasitic also okay or corpo filus also so corpo filus means growing on dung so dung means on cow dung or different animals on dung you can find this group ascomycetes so mainly they are saprophytic 
okay so then some are acting as a decomposer some are parasitic and some are growing on the dung of animals okay then my dear student they also have mycelium and here mycelium is branched so you can see in penicillium and aspergillus this mycelium okay are branched and septate so septate means between the cell division will be there okay so here you can see how they are branched mycelium are branched so clearly the picture shows that how mycelium are branched and septate so my dear student ascomycetes example what we can say saccharomyces penicillium aspergilla so this three example you can keep in your mind as the example of ascomycetes okay ascomycetes are commonly known as sac fungi okay then my dear student number third class is basidomycetes so third division of kingdom fungi is basidomycetes commonly known forms of basidomycetes are mushrooms basket fungi or puff balls so commonly these basidomycetes are known as mushrooms basket fungi sometime you will find that they are known as basket fungi or puff balls okay they grow in soil on logs and tree stumps and in living plant bodies as parasites so my dear student uh, they this basidomycetes they mainly grow in soil sometimes they grow in uh, logs okay and trees then sometimes you'll find that they are living in living plant bodies also as a parasites so some example we can say rust and smooths okay then my dear student the mycelium is branched and septate so in this uh, basidomycetes also their myceliums are branched and septate okay then my dear student here are three examples of basidomycetes number one is commonly known as mushroom okay agaricus so agaricus is the scientific name of mushroom so i hope that you have seen this mushroom and this scientific name is agaricus okay mushroom the next you can see astilago that is smooth okay so this is an example sometime you will find that in uh, mage okay so you you can find this some structures are coming out in the fruits of this mage and these formations are actually astilago okay the next is pusinia so pusinia is rust fungus so you can see uh, like rust on uh, on the leaves of this wheat okay in wheat plant if sometime some rushes comes then these are actually pusinia and pusinia is an example of basidomycetes so these are the three example of basidomycetes okay then number four is duromycetes duromycetes commonly known as imperfect fungi because only the asexual or vegetative phases of this fungi are known so my dear student duromycetes these are commonly known as imperfect fungi because only their asexual or vegetative phases are known the mycelium is septate and branched so in there also what happened the mycelium is septate and branched some members are saprophytes or parasites while a large number of them are decomposer of litter and help in mineral cycling so my dear student here in duromycetes some members are saprophytes that means some members are living on the decaying 
um, dead bodies of plants and animals in decaying things. Whereas uh, some act as a parasites, while a large number they are acting as a decomposer of litter. So litter, you know that when the leaves okay falls off and they uh, remain for in a area for many days then these are litter so after that you'll find that some microorganisms are acting on them and they are slightly transformed into soil so in this way what happened uh, this group of duromycetes are also acting as a decomposer so to convert the litter into uh, this uh, soil a group of microorganisms are acting so here what happened this duromycetes also can act as a decomposer and they help in mineral cycling so in mineral cycling you will find that this group is uh, performing a very significant role so some of the examples of duromycetes are alternaria then collectoticum and Trichoderma. So these are the three pictures we shows Duromycetes example and this picture will clarify that where we can find. Okay. So there are structures. These are shown how in masses they look. Okay. And alternaria. This is under microscope how they look. Okay, so my dear student, today we have learned about four classes of fungi. Number one, phycomycetes. Number second, we have learned about ascomycetes. Number third, basidomycetes. And number four, duromycetes. And my dear student, this uh, fungi, okay, different classes we have learned. Now, among them, some are very useful to us and some are harmful to us. Now, it's your work that... Uh, write the advantage and disadvantage of fungi write the usefulness and harmfulness of fungi so this is a homework for you so write the usefulness of fungi and harmfulness of fungi in our life okay so this is a homework for you so thank you